As Don said, my name is Carrie Lorenz, call sign Vixen. I know, I'll let that one rumble around in your melons a little bit. Imagine the conversation when I got to tell my mom and dad what that call sign was. I think it was really one of their prouder parenting moments. <laughs> but I'm super excited to be back. Uh, as you can see, I'm from Wisconsin originally, but I was fortunate in that I spent about five years living in the Twin Cities over in Chanhassen. And my uh, last two kids were actually born in Minneapolis, so it's good to be home again. But I'm really excited to be here. I was uh, a pioneer in naval aviation. I was one of the United States Navy's first females qualified to fly on and off of aircraft carriers. But what I'm most proud of is in that 10 years of experience, planning, executing, and debriefing complex missions as a Navy fighter pilot, I had the opportunity to lead large teams, to manage budgets, and to deal with finite resources. I was fortunate enough that I was able to work with some of the world's best performing, high performing team members. But I also had the chance to work with some that required maybe a few more coaching opportunities as well. In the last few years, I've been working alongside training and coaching outstanding Fortune 100, Fortune 500 executives and leaders, just like yourselves and your teams. But I've also worked uh, in the association world and with smaller organizations as well. What I would like to do today is give you a quick glimpse and share with you some of the lessons that I learned in the cockpit of an F-14 aircraft and hopefully allow you to understand some of the opportunities that are available today in the midst of really great change and great challenges. So, as we move along, I want to introduce you into my office, into the cockpit of a $45 million fighter jet. Now, this is an opportunity, and it's an experience that is not only mentally challenging, but it's physically challenging as well. Why do I say that? Why is it mentally challenging? Well, one of the things that most people don't actually realize is that being a naval aviator, flying is not your only job. We are also responsible for running the squadrons on aircraft carriers. And our squadrons have 250 to 300 people. They have about a billion dollars worth of assets. And in our roles as officers, we're running administrative departments, maintenance departments, education and training services as well. And then we have to quickly transmit, uh, transfer over into our day job, into our flying job, if you will. So what does that look like? We have to go and we finish our admin stuff and we hop into our, you know, 35 pounds of flight gear and we get all that stuff on, climb into our cockpit and very quickly we are launching off the front end of that fighter, uh, that fighter aircraft carrier going from zero to 180 miles an hour in under two seconds flat. In just a matter of a couple of minutes, we're going 600 miles an hour, all while responsible for leading two, four, six, heck, I'd take 20 wingmen if the boss would let me safely to a target and then back again. And this is where we make our big money, folks. It's landing back on that aircraft carrier. So in the back of the room, you see in the, in the lower right-hand corner how it looks kind of like a little postage stamp? That's kind of what it looks like when you're airborne, too, just like a little postage stamp like that. So you come back aboard after you've safely executed your mission, and you go from about 200 miles an hour to a full dead stop in under 1.2 seconds. Now physically, why do I say this is challenging? Because in between that fantastic takeoff and that pretty abrupt landing that's kind of like a car crash, you're doing what we call basic fighter maneuvering, right? So basically a one versus one. During this time, it is so physically challenging because oftentimes we are pulling up to eight Gs. Now that's eight times the force of gravity. So if you think about it, so this is gonna be a little math in public, so bear with me here. We're all at about one G. So if you weigh 200 pounds, when you're pulling eight Gs, that's like weighing 1,600 pounds. And this hurts. The blood is all pulling from your brain. It's pulling into your lower body extremities. You've got stuff that's popping down here that's not supposed to be. And oftentimes, the hardest part is just staying conscious. And this is when your mask is getting sucked down, and you've got you know three radios going on, and you're talking to people all at the same time, trying to get your teammates safely to that target and back again. So two pretty big challenges. So one of the things that I want to share with you, though, is this picture of a flight deck. 
And if you look at this and you really think about what happens on an aircraft carrier, oftentimes people will say, well, you know, you're in the military, you can do this because everybody's disciplined and you just do what you're told. Not really. The average flight, uh, the average aircraft carrier has about 5,000 people on it. Does anybody know what the average age is on that aircraft carrier? 25, 22, 19, 19 and a half years old. I know, right? It's scary. My oldest daughter is 16, and I'm like, oh my gosh. So 19 and a half years old with a population of 5,000 people, every nine months, that population turns over by almost 50%. So every 18 months, that entire population on that aircraft carrier is swapping out. Think about how is it that we can get that done? You have people coming from such diverse demographics and diverse experiences and populations, and yet we are able to bring everybody home again. And at the end of the day, it boils down to one thing and one thing alone. It is having one purpose and one focus. Everybody is focused on safely launching and recovering airplanes 24 hours a day, seven days a week, on average one every 30 seconds. So it's amazing. So if you think about how we're able to get this done in what's essentially a very constantly changing, challenging environment, there are certainly some takeaways from that that you can share with your teams on how to get work done when you're in this constantly changing environment. So I want to talk to you real quick about leadership skills. This is definitely one of the things I talk about. I believe that leadership skills are for everyone. And the challenge is, you know, people talk about leadership and there are all these different ideas. At the end of the day, you need to figure out what is going to make you the most valuable leader that you can be. Leadership skills are for everyone, which is the same reason I was taught the basic same skill sets as all my male counterparts in the military. Whether you're going to be a submarine driver, a tank driver, a fighter pilot, we're all given the same starting skill sets. So I want you to think about this idea of it. What is it going to take for you to be a catalyst, to really get out in front and get on the leading edge in that leadership division? And the leading edge in aviation is the most important place to be because this is where we control the direction that we're going. Everything happens right here. So what are the, those things that you need to improve upon to be the catalyst to really accelerate your performance to take it to the next level? There, there are four main topics that I talk about or ideas during a leadership keynote, but what I'd like to talk about today is this idea of being tenacious and really overcoming your fear of failure. My leadership training uh, began with quite, uh, quite a bit of intensity at officer candidate school. You know, that first morning you're waking up, you've got you know, trash can lids sliding down the hallway, you wake up about three miles into a five mile run. These are good times, people, these are good times. And a lot of times, if you've ever talked to anybody who's gone through this training,